So, hi, I'm Katie. I have my Twitter handle secretly hidden somewhere on that slide if you want to live tweet me. And I highly suggest you actually write that down because I will be wanting you to live tweet. Well, we'll get to that. So, I'm not actually a Apple anything. Um, in the last 12 months, I've done what Ruby, Perl, JavaScript, Haskell, and Python all in production. <coughs> so I haven't actually touched Swift or anything. But you know what I have done? These cool and awesome things that you guys should totally know about, right? Who here's heard of Docker? Who here's heard of OpenStack? Who here's contributed to either? You're cool. <laughs> If you contribute to Docker, they will give you money. I've earned the cryptocurrency equivalent of four cents for Docker. <laughs> and I'm also an active technical contributor for OpenStack, which is this awesome open source containerization compute thing. Um, and that's all I did. <laughs> because that was in the documentation for about four years that a get actually deletes things. <laughs> But because I did that, I get to go to Tokyo for free. <laughs> because if you commit code into OpenStack, and you can actually do this now before this deadline, if you get any of your commits uh, accepted upstream, they will give you a free ticket to go to the summit worth 600 US dollars or something. This is incentivizing open source commitments, and it's actually really useful when you know that, hey, you're actually going to be doing some good here. So this helps the really big projects trying to get people coming in, playing with their things, committing upstream, all that kind of fun open source stuff. And if you've got people that are doing coding and you do say on GitHub, you can track all this because there are awesome graphs and there's that little cool green thing. And it doesn't actually track everything though because there's a whole lot of stuff that you do in open source that GitHub doesn't capture or refuses to actually show you any collations of. There are some apps that will do these kind of things. Um, Stack Analytics is really good for the OpenStack stuff, and the open source report card was a thing for one of their data hack days, which would show you what languages you use in nice pie graphs, and that was really cool. But what about everything else? Like, I've been talking about the code. What about the reviews, the documentation, the testing, the design, the promotion, talking about these things? There's no real mechanisms for attributing or acknowledging any of these. So here's a straw poll. Let's get some audience participation here. Who here has ever used any sort of open source stuff in their day-to-day -day work? Who here has contributed back to any of that stuff in any day-to-day -day work? Who here has volunteered in an event before? Who here has spoken at an event before? Who here has actually turned up to an event? If your hand's not up now, you're really not paying attention. <laughs> because you're awesome. Everyone here is awesome because you turn up to these things, you care enough to go outside of your normal routine, to attend these things, to learn. And the chances are pretty good that you're going to teach someone else about these things and you're going to spark someone, something in someone that's actually going to make them want to continue on and ride this train all the way through. And you're awesome, and Colin Mockery says so. Community. That's all well and good. I can make you guys giggle and be awesome, but how can we actually acknowledge this for people that aren't watching the live stream or whatever we're doing here? Does anyone here know this person? This is Leslie Hawthorne. She is absolutely amazing. She ran Google Summer of Code for a couple of years. She's run hundreds of events, and she's absolutely amazing. She wrote a blog post a couple of months ago now. Um, this is the hashtag that we'll be using for the rest of this session. I suggest you write it down while I ramble on for a little bit. She wrote a blog post, and it's this really interesting concept about acknowledging all our open source contributions. And the hashtag stands for Let's All Build Hat Racks. And there's an, even a hat over there because Paul has a hat. And I'm not going to wear it because I, I can't fill his hat. But I saw this blog post and I thought, this is awesome. So for the last couple of months, I've been doing a few lightning talks and one or two major talks where I've been putting all this stuff into a nice, easy to use manual called Dialkalenk, which is really bad Swedish for bad pun. 
So we're going to go through what Leslie would like us to do. So story goes, at LinuxConf Australia in Auckland, a couple of months ago now, there's Leslie Hawthorne and a wonderful lady called Deb Nicholson from the Open Innovation Network. She deals with patent law and all this kind of stuff. They're now working together in the Sahana Software Foundation where they get to be on a board and they get to say that I'm doing this thing for this place at this time. And Deb says, this is really great. This gives me somewhere to hang my hat, you know, somewhere where you can actually put this on your LinkedIn profile instead of just saying it's a project that you do for free because you love it. Leslie just ran with this and actually created the whole hat rack thing about getting acknowledgements for everything that we do that you can't normally find the information for. So five simple steps. Make a list. Make a list about someone who you think has been awesome in open source and send it to them. That's it. But if you want to be really cool, you can tweet about it, which is why we're using the hashtag. And if I don't have one tweet already, I'm going to be upset. And you can also put it on LinkedIn, because LinkedIn recommendations are amazing. And we'll get to that later. But the last thing, which is really something she's been advocating, is doing it for someone who's not like you. Because we have a whole lot of respect and stuff for the cis, heterosexual, white male. But there's all these other people in our community that help as well. And it's not just the coders, it's the testers, it's the researchers, it's the documentation writers, it's everyone else. Everyone else in the software development lifecycle that doesn't use GitHub. And everyone's happy and everyone's awesome and it's all happy and the problem is this really didn't work. So I've given a five minute version of that um, in three different cities, four different languages. Um, one wasn't even a language place, it was a DevOps meetup. And every time I do the five minute thing, I have the hashtag on every slide and I'm like, please tweet something nice. I get one or two tweets and that's it. The only time I've ever gotten more than that is because I refused to get off stage until I got at least 10. <laughs> that worked. I'm not going to do that today, but it's like, do we not know how to be nice? This is a really important question. So, live demo. Hello, Chris. Hi, Katie. How are you? I'm good. Does everyone here know Chris? Chris is awesome. Chris is awesome. He is the <coughs> self-appointed international lightning talk czar. He <laughs> runs many conferences behind the scenes and actually sometimes put his, puts his name to it, them. He's a brilliant person and he's a really good friend of mine and I think he's awesome and he doesn't get a, nearly enough credit for what he does. So I want everyone to give him a clap. Yeah. Now Chris, now that people are being nice to you, what do you say? Why are you applauding? <laughs> you're supposed to oh, say. thank you. Thank you. See, last time you started complaining about this on Twitter. <laughs> uh, this, unfortunately, was the tweet that got the most activity out of the entire hashtag for that day. Yeah. But it's okay, because it wasn't just him. It was the next guy that I also tried to give accolades to, which really didn't help either. Because these are two amazing people and you're like complaining about the fact that you're being thanked and it's really annoying. And when you have to have a guy who runs Django come in and say, no, actually you guys are pretty cool to kind of calm you guys down. It's, why can't we take a compliment? This is why we can't take a compliment. It's all about understating what we're actually doing. It's all the, ah, oh, she'll be right, don't worry about it. No, you guys are actually being awesome. You're being awesome, you're being awesome, everyone's being awesome. And we're not saying how awesome we are to anyone who's actually trying to make the world a better place. And there's a little bit of the tall poppy syndrome happening because as soon as we're like, oh, I don't want to be acknowledged, I just want to hide down here because I don't want to have my head cut off as being an outlier. That's this doesn't happen. People can be awesome and they don't get their heads cut off for it or bitten off or whatever it is you do to heads when people try to be awesome. 
And there's a little bit of this going on as well, which is everyone's favourite buzzword, but yeah. If we actually get thanked, we tend to think that, oh no, this can't be, I'm not actually this, no. No, you are. You, everyone is. Everyone's really awesome. One way we can try to help bring ourselves back to reality and saying, actually, you know what, I am kind of awesome, is acknowledging our own achievements. So, this is a picture of a donut. It actually looks like a really delicious donut. This picture of a donut was taken by an amazing lady called Lara Hogan. She took a picture of this donut because she finished a draft of a book that she wrote. In a stream of Instagram pictures, this wouldn't be too uncommon. But the comment underneath saying, I just finished writing a book. That's what makes it awesome because every time she does something, say a keynote or launching a book or finishing a significant life milestone, she treats herself to a donut. And then she says, hi, I did a donut thing today. And this makes it really cool because she can go through and go, I've done all these really cool things. And yes, not all contributions are donuts. You don't all have to write books, although I'm sure O'Reilly Media would be really happy if you all wrote books. But it's the little things like, okay, who hasn't heard of Stack Overflow? Good. Can anyone take a guess at how many questions Stack Overflow has on it? One million questions. More! Ten million! They recently passed ten million questions! And they had a whole great big marketing campaign about it. Stackoverflow.com slash 10M per million. So there's 10 million programming questions on there, 16 million answers, more upvotes than you can shake a stick at. And a whole lot of these things are against stuff like Objective-C and Swift and probably in the arcade version a whole lot of CCAN stuff. And <laughs> If you have a significantly large project, you've probably got a tag on here and you can see all the people that are actually running your community and answering questions for you. And that's how many solutions that collectively we've been able to give to people. That's billion with a B. That's uh, 51,000 developers are on the site at any one time. Uh, every 12 seconds as someone posts an answer, these kind of stats. Um, the entire database uh, is 12,000 times bigger than Wikipedia. So that's a lot of things. And this website is literally just a great big thank you because the little tiny bits that we do to try to make things better really adds up. So if anyone's actually posted an answer, here's some pat on the back. Yay! People actually doing what I'm doing on stage, it's great. <laughs> but why would you say thank you? Because it's a nice thing to do. Because we can do all these things and if we don't get any acknowledgement, then we, try and we tend not to do them anymore. But if you encourage this behavior, then you can end up doing some awesome things like the fact that I may have been at a pub last night and that's the reason and the whole story about how I ended up getting pulled in to do this talk because I got voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real word. Um, the first time I actually thought, hey, public speaking is not a bad idea, I accidentally said that in front of the guy that organized the entire conference and now I help run it. So I know that I'm super encourageable. But if you find people like that in your community, they can start doing things for you so you don't have to. And apparently, I'm good at this stuff, so yay. You, we need to nurture these seeds as soon as they appear and then we can really help bring people out and sh show their potential and all the other kind of cool buzzwords. And the really, really, really cool thing is that back to the list of five stuff, giving someone Something to show for their efforts is as easy as just posting on their LinkedIn a recommendation. Now, I don't like LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a little bit awful with how it thinks that you know people of people and all that stuff. However, as a replacement for the, for the traditional paper resume, it's pretty good. So on LinkedIn, you've got recommendations and you've got endorsements. The recommendations, these are the awesome things, the nice little blurbs that you'd never see enough of, of, this person is awesome, I would hire them. 
So to create a recommendation for someone on LinkedIn, you have to have the recipient create an entry on one of their experience categories. Now, these are all the different experience, uh, different categories you can have, except LinkedIn will only let you attribute a recommendation to experience or education. All that other stuff, all that volunteers, certifications, you can't actually add any accolades to. It has to be those two. And I mean, out of those two, well, education doesn't really work unless you're teaching people about jQuery or something. So you have to put a note under experience for anyone to actually recommend you about things. But that's the point. It is experience. Running a conference, helping out with community dev stuff, it's an experience. It's something that you can put on your resume saying, hi, I did the thing. Yes, they did the thing. They are awesome. Endorsements are probably the opposite of this, though, because if you have a look at what I've currently been endorsed for, there's a little outlier right at the bottom of that list. <laughs> but half that stuff's right. I mean, apparently I know Ruby and Python and JavaScript, so go me. Um, mine's not that bad. Chris's is a little bit worse. Um, you'll see in there he knows about teeth, he knows about dinosaurs, he knows about police brutality. <laughs> Yeah, the good thing is that you can't actually add anything to someone else's profile that's not already on the list of approved things. However, table flipping is now on the approved list of things. <laughs> yeah. So, bringing it all back to something that's not marketing and recruity, GitHub. So, I mentioned earlier that there was a little asterisk against GitHub. There's a few things wrong with GitHub. Let me describe them. User contributions. So, this is my GitHub profile. This does not in any way reflect what I actually do. Yes, there's a few things on there. I've got my popular stuff, which is probably out of date. Uh, the repositories I've con contributed to. I've contributed to Docker. I've contributed to Ruby on Rails, to RubyCop, to OpenStack, PyBee. I've done all this stuff, but it's not actually listed there. Where did all that data go? And then there's this awesome little green thing at the bottom which everyone loves, right? You want to get the green bar full. You want to show that I've been committing stuff every day. But that's your public one. Your private one is going to look a little bit different if you do anything with private repositories. So the difference between these two, I'm doing a whole lot of stuff that no one's ever seeing. But what actually counts on this is hidden away in a tiny little link on there. And the documentation for this is really interesting because not a lot of things actually count to adding to your little green graph. What does count is commits. Only against master or GitHub pages, the documentation side. And issues and pull requests totally count, but only if you open them and only within the last 12 months. The 12 months thing because the graph can't go on forever. But these things only count if you own the repo, or you're a collaborator, or you're a part of the organization that owns the repo, or you forked it, but commits don't count on forks, and there's all this stuff about starring, and it's just the, the Venn diagram for this is too complicated, but only a small fraction counts. Just, just the tiniest, tiniest bit. So you could work so hard on a fork of something, you could work in a branch, you could do all this stuff, commit it up to master, do your proper software development lifecycle stuff where you keep your master actionable, and it doesn't count. So it all just sounds too hard, right? You want to contribute, you want to do the Cody stuff, but it's okay, there's a hack for that because all you have to do is just run pip install rockstar, and it will actually fill in your graph for you by creating hello world snippets in C++ and backdating them for the last 400 days. But, you guys are Apple people, you don't want that. What you want to do is show that you have five years of Swift experience. <laughs> By running this, backdating it for 1900 days, and I mean, if this guy approves, <laughs> that picture is on the documentation for Rockstar, it may or may not be shopped. But, that's, yeah, this, if you actually run this stuff, it will go and automatically use whatever you have in your local Git user and stuff. 
you may be able to undo it if you remove the stuff, but please use this as your own, at your own peril. And if you really don't want it, but you just want to see what the graph will look like, then there's a whole lot of apps that will actually do that for you. And it's not like GitHub has ever actually made money based on the fact that they think it's a good idea for you to hack your contributions or anything. They don't actually sell this anymore, but it's still a... It, I was really confused the first time I saw this because it's like, why is there writing on your contrib... Oh, you didn't do the... Yeah. So that's the user side of things. But on the project side, and this is the really interesting part, if anyone runs a project, then this is the kind of thing that you need to start taking notes for. And have I actually had any tweets on the hashtag yet, if anyone's yes. paying attention? I have? Yeah. Are you just saying that? No, yes. no because I tweet them. So. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So... What time are we running at? Oh, cool. I'm good. So, project contributions. Has anyone heard of reveal.js? Okay, I needed an example and no one would tell me of any open source Apple stuff, so I chose this one. So this is the presentation engine that I'm actually using for this deck. It's got some really cool features where I can make everything go black. And that's actually based on the clicker buttons. That's really cool. So enough advertising for them. This is what you see when you try to go to the repo for reveal.js. There's a wonderful little number up there that says there are 142 different contributors to this repository. If you actually wanted to see who those were, you can't. Because you end up getting a graph and it sorts by how many lines of code you contributed and it only shows the top 100. There is no way on the GitHub native interface to get a list of all the contributors for a project. And this is only some of the contributors, because everything there is lines of code. So what about everything else that I described earlier? What about the issues that are logged against Reveal? What about anything that's unmerged or in discussion? What about the code reviews? What about the feature discussions? What about the voting? A plus one in one of your issues saying, I want to build a thing. Yes, I think this is a good idea. That's a contribution. It totally is. It might be a couple of characters, but it's someone actually saying, yes, I think this is a good idea. And people who make these interactions with your project need to be acknowledged. So can we actually get this information? Of course, they have an API. It won't be too hard, right? So smacking my head against Python packaging and a couple of weeks later, I made a thing. It's called OctoHat, because hat rack, and because the actual GitHub logo is called OctoCat. <laughs> it's very cool. But yes, what you can do is if you have Python packaging and all that set up, you can pip install OctoHat and you can run any GitHub repo against this and it will go through the API, pull out every single bit of metadata it knows about and work out who has contributed to your repo that hasn't actually committed code. So I've run this for a few different things. Um, I may have hit the GitHub rate limiting a few times, but I can tell you that for Reveal, OctoHack can work out that there's 142 people that have committed code, but there's 435 who are interacting with it. And you would never know that unless you went and dived through the API yourself. The rest of the output for this is a list of every single person, and it makes it really easy because you can cross that with their profiles and you can say, email every single one saying, hi, would you like to do more? A really big one that I use when I do this talk with the Python people is requests, because even though there's only, only 350 people, 1,200 have interacted with this over the last couple of years some of them as little as a plus one saying, yes, I think this would be a good idea. And just because I ended up sitting next to Paul for a little bit, I ended up running the numbers on CCAN as well. Again, rate limiting. 48 co-contributors. Yeah, these are orders of magnitude well above what's actually getting committed. Now, I'm sure you could run this stuff again as SVN and it would be all different, but most of the things we're doing now is Git, GitHub is the standard, yeah. So it's just one little tool that I've made to try to do the thing. And if you want to get meta, I ran the numbers on Rockstar itself and found that out of 30 contributors, there's actually 36 other people. Most of them are actually cat images. 
But that's fine. As people that have heard about this thing, they've probably shared it with their friends. It's one little point of data that probably means that there's another spawn out of information somewhere that's happening. And if you want to get really meta, I actually ran this on the code itself. And this is actually part of my Travis that runs any time I uh, update it. There have been three code contributors. There's been myself, a wonderful guy called David, who helped me with some of the uh, requirements, issues, or problems, and another person that actually ported it to Python 3 for me. And I've tried to thank them. And they don't actually have a real name, so I can't actually say who they are, which is annoying. But there's also been one, no, one non-code contributor who's actually a core dev for Python who helped me with the packaging because it was being annoying. And he told me what to do in one of the issues, and because he didn't actually do the code himself, it's like it did the thing. And it's just like, yay, people are helping with my code. And it's an awesome feeling, and giving that awesome feeling back to the people that have helped you, and they get that awesome feeling, and then it continues on, is really, 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 really good. So if anyone was actually paying attention there and needs a TLDR, there's nothing wrong with being nice. You can encourage and help people give back, and they will do more things for you, and you can be a benevolent dictator if you really wanted to, or you could just be nice to people because it's nice to do. So hashtag again, there's a link, the links, and every single person who's on that list, including Chris, who's talking downstairs next, that's why he's run away, including Paul, who's awesome, and a whole lot of other people as well. They're the non-code contributors to my talk about non-code contributions, so it's three layers of meta. Um, that's all I had. I'm exactly on time, which means we have like minutes for questions. And thank you very much.